Hello. Today I am speaking with Calum Watson, a 24-year-old adventurer who took on a 3,000-kilometer solo portage across the Northwest Territories in the summer of 2023. He spent 122 days alone on the water or with a canoe hauled over his head. He learned countless lessons from how to expect the unexpected to how to invest in the communities that he was passing through and how to patch up a much needed pair of pants. Following his portage, he is currently touring across Canada, giving presentations on his experience so that aspiring adventurers of all ages can follow in his footsteps. So let's see what Caleb has to say about his experience today. I canoed across the Northwest Territories last summer. So I left on May 18th and I started at Fort Smith, kind of the end of the road at the southern border of the territories. And I headed down the Slave River to Great Slave Lake. And I went into the east arm, up the north arm, past Yellowknife, and then all the way to the lake's northern tip. And then I headed upstream on the Marion River. And then it's called the Eda Trail. And then eventually I portaged into the Kamsel River system to Hodder Lake. And from Hodder Lake, I did a portage into Great Bear Lake. And then I kind of paddled all the way along the shore of Great Bear Lake to where the river flows out at Great Bear River at Delaney to the Mackenzie. And then followed the Mackenzie all the way to Tuktoyaktuk on the Arctic Ocean. And I finished on September 16th. Nice. And how many days in total did that take you? It was 122 days in total. What initially motivated you to take that trip? I just, yeah, I really love canoeing. And uh, ever since my first canoe trip, I kind of just uh, knew that I wanted to spend like a whole whole summer from spring to fall kind of in the north on a big kind of adventure, I guess. Was there any aspect of the trip that you like initially felt unprepared for or like while you were on the trip? Was there something that you struggled with unexpectedly? Was it like a mental barrier, a physical barrier? I can imagine that like the mental barriers would have been just as difficult to overcome as the physical ones, if not more. I know. I always think like you can never be perfectly prepared for something. I feel like if you if you kind of want to wait till you're perfectly prepared and perfectly ready, I feel like you're never going to end up actually going. You kind of just have to event, you know, you got to be prepared, but eventually you just have to say you know i'm ready enough to go and yeah so there's at the start of it like the just uh really the hardest part was just kind of committing to the trip and taking the risk and kind of getting started and then once i once i got going as soon as i kind of got my paddle in the water and started heading along you know all the worries kind of faded away and it kind of got yeah a lot easier once i got going and was there anything on the mental side of it that you had to overcome um yeah like a lot of spending a lot of time alone i guess that's probably the the biggest mental challenge i would say for sure how'd you overcome it um i don't know i guess just kind of took it day by day and then you know i always had my i was alone but you know you have your family and friends kind of with you in spirit and then uh you know, I didn't meet many people, but the people that I did meet in the Northwest Territories were really, really incredible and really hospitable people and kind of always trying to help me out however they could. So kind of, yeah, those factors probably played a big role for sure. What was your biggest takeaway during the trip? Did you learn anything about yourself along the way? Well, for starters, like it was kind of, it's ironic that, you know, it was a long solo journey, but kind of, uh, you know, the interactions with other people is kind of probably one of the biggest takeaways, like, met some really incredible people in the Northwest Territories and seen some really incredible acts of kindness from them kind of trying to help me out. And then uh, just seeing even the support from friends and family at home and kind of uh, when you're away from your loved ones that long, you really kind of appreciate them that much more. Is there anything that you would do differently? Uh, I don't know. I'm pretty, I'm pretty happy with how it turned out. So I, I'll say I would, yeah, keep it the way it was. But maybe, I mean, maybe I would have packed some little bit different gear, but for the most part, I'm I'm pretty happy with how it turned out. Did you have any gear fails while you were on the trail? Probably the most notable was I had I had two pairs. I left the trip with two pairs of pants that were both, uh, they are both old. Like they had both had seen a couple of years of guiding and canoe tripping and 
they had already been patched multiple times, but I figured because I had two pairs, I'd be able to get through it. So, but eventually about, about day 50, the one pair was totally destroyed. And then about two days later, the other pair was totally destroyed. So that was, that's probably the biggest gear failure would be my pants, I guess. What did you do? Just went pantsless? Uh, well, there was, there wasn't much left. Like the knees were gone. The butt was gone. The crotch was gone, but I kind of, uh, I ended up meeting these, I, I wasn't expecting to meet anyone on this hotel, but I ran into these guys from uh, Wati, and the one guy gave me, he gave what, I guess how I met them was that I knew there was an abandoned fishing lodge on this lake. I had found it on the map previously, so I was going there in the hopes that I would find some sort of old material that I could use to patch my pants with, and then I got there. I was totally surprised to see these guys there. And then uh, the one guy gave me this bag with some kind of this canvas bag. So I ended up cutting that up and kind of patched my pants with that. And then I actually had another another pair of pants mailed to me on the Mackenzie River. So I had, a, I had a good pair of pants for the last 20 days or so. Good, good. It all worked out. Yeah, exactly. Um, all right. Well, when you did cross that finish line, was it difficult to adjust to normal life? with like a roof over your head afterwards um yeah it was definitely like a bit of a it was kind of like a mixed emotions at the end like i was you know it's, it's great to kind of complete your goal and and finish the trip and get to see friends and family again but at the same time it's also like yeah i was kind of almost dreading the finish a bit towards the end because i'd kind of been you know so well just traveling for quite a long time and you really kind of get into your own little world sort of and i really do enjoy that kind of uh, canoe tripping and traveling the wilderness and all that. So yeah, coming back was a took a bit of time to adjust to for sure. And now you're touring around Canada, teaching people about your trip and how to prepare for it and everything. So mm -hmm. what are you hoping to convey to your audience while doing your presentations? What's your message to your audience, and what can they take away from your experience? Um yeah, like my story, like when I do my presentation, it's I do like a Q and A afterwards where I'll kind of, if somebody wants to ask me questions about gear and stuff, I'll talk about it then. But for the most part, I don't really like to talk about the gear, the how to during the presentation. I'm kind of more just trying to tell the story and maybe a bit of, uh, and also like some takeaways, I guess, like for one thing, like I'd mentioned earlier, you know, you can't always wait till you're perfectly prepared to take that dream adventure. You know, eventually you kind of just got to take that leap and, uh, you know, you don't got to be, an expert to go on a big canoe trip obviously I'd be prepared but i consider myself nowhere near an expert paddler but you can still do awesome things without being an expert so can't be too afraid of you know being perfectly ready to do stuff and um yeah just uh the takeaway of all the incredible people i met and you know there's a lot more good people in the world than bad and then the last thing kind of the big takeaway would be that i guess on the trip it's kind of uh you know as you're really immersed in the present on a trip and it kind of really teaches you i guess to live in the moment and kind of you know life's about the journey not the finish sort of those probably be the main main takeaways i'd say from my adventure and presentation i guess and maybe talking specifically to fellow adventurers who want to do a similar trip what would you convey to them yeah, I guess my thing would just be, yeah, if you want to do the trip, I guess you just got to commit to it, pick a date. And yeah, my advice would be just if you want to do it, do it. Turning to your book and your documentary that you're working on, um, tell me a bit about that. Yeah, so I kind of uh, filmed the whole trip and I kept a journal. And yeah, I've never, never done any filming or documentary really before this or wrote a book or anything so it's kind of just uh learning as i go i guess and kind of getting figured out and yeah it's a little realizing it will take longer than i maybe initially thought to get those done yeah for sure do you have a release date in mind or are you still just uh no no i do not but uh i don't know maybe in the next well, hopefully within the next year or two i would say for sure why do you think people connect so deeply with your story why people want to hear it so badly i guess maybe a couple factors like one i mean i mean the first thing i guess is, is it's a fairly uh long trip and then it's uh 
solo trip so that kind of adds a bit of uniqueness but then also you know i kind of part of my story is like you know focusing on you know the people i met up there and and then my trip was like uh i feel like a lot of canoe trips they're really almost rushing racing to get the finish where like when i did this trip i really wanted to kind of take my time and really enjoy it like if i really wanted to go crazy you know i probably could have done that trip in a hundred days but i took that extra 22 days to you know kind of really go slow and enjoy the landscape and you know you know meet some awesome people up there so i guess yeah that's kind of maybe what makes my adventure unique